map did cost DG. Well, we've got the Lilia first picked here for the side of Evil Geniuses. Again, this champion, I like to meme on the win rate a little bit, but 23% is pretty low. So we'll see if Evil Geniuses can figure out how to make this champion work. But on the other side, we are seeing something that is hitting so much success here recently. Fasting Senna with big old hungry Tom Kench right next to her. Coming to a bot lane near you, Flowers. This is oh, my yeah. number one recommendation to bottom lanes out there. Get you a beefy Tom Kench, allow him to farm. Senna will be happy just picking up soul scraps, uh, be able to scale that way. Uh, and honestly, she scales really, really nicely as a, as a long range DPS, especially with the buffs to attack speed and Kraken Slayer now working with the Q, people going the Kraken Slayer Rage Blade option. It's no longer, uh, you know, one of the lower DPS, more poke, poke oriented champions that they were using. Jizuke is jumping on the hype train of the, uh, the Annie for Jensen uh, movement that's going on. If you want to get out there on Twitter as well, join the movement. Only a few more retweets. It's on over. It's over 5K. Post. They got it. Yes. Yeah, they got it. It's over 5K. I looked at it right before I was supposed to be in here to cast this game. <laughs> it was at like 5,020 or something. They, they got it. Nice. All right. Well, we've got an Annie in our futures then. Uh, Jizuke is definitely a big fan. They're saving his pick. Uh, till later in the draft though, so I expect Dignitas to try and whittle down because Jizuke is one of the most bannable mid laners. In my opinion, if you take out the Rise and the Syndra, then you feel way better about the possible options that Jizuke will have left up. We saw the LeBlanc yesterday, ineffective into the Tristana mid uh, from Insanity. And then you, he, he kind of goes for more fringe picks. The Echo, I think, is probably the most fearsome, but it does feel like he's one of the ones with a very comfortable champion pool, and you want to take away some of the priority picks. Target mid lane if EG don't pick it early. Well, we've got the Gangplank and Gnar there in the top lane, but a little bit of imbalance here in the first three picks for either side. Yes, it's AD carries. Yes, it's top laners, but considering jungle and support are not quite matched up here, means the bands might seem a little bit different. So Bard is banned away, stopping Ignar from being able to take control of that one and really be a ruckus, cause a ruckus, I should say, all over the map here with those rotations, as the Hecarim will be banned out by evil geniuses, trying to take away one of the choices here for Dardock in the jungle. What's left here, Dig? What do you want to focus? Uh, too bad, though, because he's already played that one, so I doubt it would be a repeat <laughs> a repeat visit here for Dardock. I think he still has plenty of options uh, to go for. Again, I'm actually kind of surprised the, the Grave still goes through again. That's one of Dardock's uh, favorite champions. They are pretty physical heavy already, though, with the early um, Gangplank lock-in, so maybe he goes for the Elise or, or an AP option. Um, it definitely does, uh, you know, have some possibilities of diving bottom if you have Gangplank Ultimate already on top side. Tom Kench Devour can actually be used very effectively in diving offensively. You devour somebody out uh, after they get the tower aggro and complete your dive that way. There's the Syndra I mentioned. They got one half of yep. it. Uh, uh, actually, it's uh, coming at the hands of EG and won't be the blind pick there for Saligo. All right, Dignitas, you got to blind pick one of these What's it going to be? Okay, let's keep on adding some more champions into Dardoch's pool, man. It is the Kane. Anybody playing fantasy that managed to accurately predict Kane? <laughs> hey, my applause is for you, because I don't, I don't know how in the hell you would have got that one right, but Dignitas is going for it, Dardoch's going for it, and the response from EG is grabbing the Seraphine. Incredibly powerful pick right now. That ultimate just completely breaks a team fight. It is so good in any and every situation, and Lucian will round out the draft here for EG. Ooh, I actually like this. Lucian, they can put it if they want to uh, flex it around. Looks like it'll probably be mid lane uh, for Jazuke, but uh, they still they still could flex if they really wanted to. Uh, last pick up probably here for Saligo. Very good wave clear for Victor, but does have to worry about harassment from a Lucian lane. Well, it won't be the Victor after all. Instead, we will have the Zoe picked up here for Dignitas, providing them with the much needed magic damage this comp was lacking. See if they go with the LPL style. When LPL mid laners are facing Lucian, a lot of the times they will go electrocute um, instead of the airy. Uh, I want to see if he if he goes electrocute burst damage. Uh, bottom side, Ezreal Seraphine lane, very annoying poke to deal with. 
Uh, Tom Kench will be probably the fed Tom Kench though. So uh, you get extra levels. Uh, your gray skin will do wonders for you there. So one thing that I always look at when I see Seraphine in the game, besides my folder of Skarner and a Space Marine armor images to post on Twitter, is how does this champion work with the rest of her team in terms of who's got slows to set her up? Because her E becomes a root as soon as somebody is already slowed. So with Lilia and Nar being able to provide that, that'll help a bunch. But early on in the lane, Ezreal doesn't really have any slows to apply. So Seraphine's not going to have as easy of a time setting things up. Yeah, I mean, she can double cast them herself if you save it for your your double double cast proc. Um, right. And it, it is always nice to have that synergy, but not a must have. It's still really annoying when you have to deal with these two champions constantly throwing out skill shots, especially if you lose control of your minion wave and they get pushing you early because they can push you under tower and throw harassment at you that way. Um, like we said, though, for the Senna Tom Kench, I think they will be uh, pretty fine. Senna, uh, if it is the fasting Senna, does get to try and answer a lot of those poke opportunities that Ezreal and Seraphine make. Uh, if they don't hit their skill shots, it is pretty easy for Senna to answer. And she's trying to look to get harassment off to farm up the souls uh, that way as well. All right, Kobe, let me talk to you a little bit because I know you love talking jungle. So let's talk Kane for a while because what I've heard from Kane mains and just... That whole community in the past is that for a long time, everybody considered blue cane trolling and red cane's the right one to go. But the number that I always heard is the magic spot for the blue cane is you got to have three targets that you can instantly blow up. Now, there are three targets that can be instantly blown up on the other side. There's four, actually. Yeah. But this is also competitive play. So before we load into the game, before we see the keystones, because those always tell you which one it's going to be, mm -hmm. which cane is this? Is it blue or red? So for me, I would say, uh, even though I I like red more, higher win rate all around, waiting the extra two minutes is is such a long power trough because it's even if you want to go red, it's so difficult to go it here. You you like you have to get Nar catch him in mega form. Like it's almost impossible to farm those yeah. souls because they're all range champions. So. Guess what? You're getting blue souls, Cloud. You're probably blue. <laughs> if, if you want to wait the two-minute penalty to after you get blue transformation, then just sit on your hands and be no transformation cane uh, for another two minutes until your red comes up. You can go about it, but I would say just go with what the game is giving you. They're all range champions. Immediately transform as early as possible uh, unless the game state is in such a state that you can handle it no problem and your team is that far ahead. Maybe you have that luxury, but I say blue all the way uh, for this game. Plus, it's Dardock here. He's looking to style yeah, yeah, on yeah. people. Get some lethality. Go blue cane. Get in there and one shot these AD carries and the supports alike. That's what I was going to ask next is, is it a blue cane, like true blue type of angle with the lethality and the one shots and the solo queue nightmare? Or is it blue cane with a gore drinker just because you wanted to play red uh, cane, but you got the blue? Uh. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. If, if you're going blue, you've made your decision. Don't turn back, okay? <laughs> it's like it's like you pick Rek'Sai and then you go a tank build and you see a Sunfire Rek'Sai out there. You're like, what like, the oh, hell is going why on? Pick Rek'Sai. Pick a different champion then if, you, if you're if you're not gonna go lethality uh, in there. So honestly, yeah, uh, let's see if we can get the blue cane. Also, blue cane works so well because they have Zoe bubbles. Uh, you're fishing with Zoe bubbles. Low cooldown doesn't cost her a lot to throw out. Somebody falls asleep. Guess what? Kane is a nightmare. He's going to come over, kill you in your sleep, uh, and get out immediately. <laughs> that kill you in your sleep part got pretty monk a W there, man. That that's was what, not that's expecting what happens the, when Zoe's in the game. The horror movie version of Zoe. <laughs> Which is actually just normal Zoe, but still. Okay, so we've got the Senna, we've got the Zoe, we've got Gangplank's global ulti. There's a lot of ranged potential over here on the side of Dignitas. But you know one thing I'm not seeing a lot of, Kobe? Engage. They're great at counter-engage. They're great at kiting back if you try to engage onto them. But in terms of being able to pick the fights themselves, I'm not seeing the tools here unless somebody gets tagged by one of those bubbles. Yeah, Bubbles or Lilia Seeds. Two can play the sleep game, Flowers. See if Lilia can throw out these bowling balls, uh, hit, so, hit some people with some sleeps as well for them. And, you know, Nar, Nar is always very tricky. 
Uh, if you have yes. confidence in the player, and personally, I have a very high confidence in Impact controlling the rage on his NAR in the side lane, having good teleports, having good flanks with it, and he's earned, the, earned that trust. He's proven it many times on this champion. Uh, so I think that he is one that can balance it pretty well. It's still kind of tricky. It's still pretty finicky. If worse comes to worse, though, the NAR jumps in. As long as you're Omega, you're beefy enough to not die, and Seraphine can just roll out the Encore, bounce it off your head, <laughs> extend the range about four more screens and, and ends up charm, charming a couple people to, to light them up. Yeah, that's, I guess that is one thing that they've also got to be aware of here with this roster being mostly these melee champions is Seraphine loves to have a couple of divers on her team to just extend her own ultimate range so she can stay 3,000 units away and just yeet that big old pink Ezreal ulti right down the whole lane. But that's going to take some careful positioning here. We know Lilia likes to try to get in the middle of everybody, go for the big multi-man sleep, but she's not a tank. She will have to make sure she's not over committing to that. Otherwise, man, there is so much damage on that enemy team for Dignitas to be able to blow these guys up. I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out here. I hope we get some spice from early on. Even like, I want to see some level one invades. You're up against a Kane. If Kane gets set behind, he's just his poor little half melee minion with the edgy scythe and a Naruto haircut. Yeah. Like there's a lot of plays that can be made to shut Kane down. Yeah, I also don't want to see uh, Conqueror because that would be your red. Let's see, Mode of Truth. All right, Dark Harvest. Okay, we got, we got the Dark Harvest, baby. That means blue. Let's do it. Good man, Dardock. Good man. Let's see it. Now, Kane, also, there are some other intricacies. He annihilates Raptor camps just like Lilia does. So maybe we have some level one shenanigans. You can you can often see some some weird routes where uh, either Kane or Lilia teams try and get double Raptors uh, early on or, or fight over them and transition that way because Raptor camp is so well positioned that if you can control early Raptor respawns uh, on the two minute timer, you basically gain more mid lane priority by virtue of making your opponent's jungle routes more inefficient. Uh, them not having their own Raptors to go for and trying to hover around mid and keep a vision around that area. So Dardock is hovering his own, trying to watch out, play defense here, uh, expecting some, uh, some EG possibilities of, of punishment. All right, Dardock is not willing to give away those ever so valuable chickens. I feel it. I hate it when people steal my chickens away. It is just one of the most important resources across Summoner's Rift. But evil geniuses waiting for the late invade here. They recognize Raptor the importance fight. of chicken Raptor camp fight. control. This is it. Evil Genius is walking in, but Fake God is walking down. Dignitas is coming to collapse. It's more TPs breaking out. It's level one fight. Finn Scarin has to flash away, trying to get all the way out of this one, staying alive, but Aphromoo is here. They're caught between a rock and a hard place, and it's first blood for Dignitas with the flash over the wall, follow from Fake God. He's going to get him even more impact, down to 100 HP. Where's the last bullet in his poor little Yordle back? One more auto attack will do it, but the blast code's on the way, and impact lives. Holy hell, hot damn, that is some jungle pressure right there. They said Dignitas was rebuilt around Dardock, and they're not joking. Everybody listen up. Dardock says jump, you say how high, come protect my raptors, and all five of them show up to do it. Oh my goodness, Fitzgerry walks in with a thumbs up. Little did Bambi know, the trap is about to close <laughs> right behind him. Fake God is here. Teleport is right behind him. Afro moves closing the gates. Neo is here as well. You see Ezreal on the minimap immediately going for the bottom lane wave, and he did get to push it, so there's some. Oh, we are done. We are done. Fitzgerald's going to drop, man. Look, as soon as we're back into the game, they're fighting again. Dardock's back at it. Souls, flowers, souls. Look at all those beautiful blue <laughs> souls picked up by Kane. This is dream scenario. Sometimes when you play Kane, you have to sacrifice your life to go for souls and create action. But Dardock is on fire here. Two kills over to Dignitas. Tremendous amount of souls picked up early here. This is Dignitas. They are contending for a top team here, Flowers. They're already above 500. They're looking to break into the top of the LCS. Holy cow, man. And as you can see, we actually had somebody on Twitter predict that the cane was coming out. So 
That dude's got Props. a bigger brain than me, because I would have never predicted the cane, nor would I have predicted it to be going this well for him early on in the game with all those orbs already in his pocket. Two deaths on the enemy jungler. And Dignitas are feeling good about the way this one is starting up, man. This is great. The kills even, <laughs> one on each one of the solo laners, feels fantastic. You know what I'm remembering now, too, is Fake God's hilarious interview <laughs> after their previous victory. Uh, Latigris asked him, okay, so what is this uh, strategy with Dardog picking a different champion every game? Is that, <laughs> is that just a Dardog thing? Or, like, you know, is that the strat? You guys got some plans going? And he was like, you know what? We, that's just a Dardock thing. <laughs> he picks what he wants to pick, and sometimes we win. Uh, it's a top Dardock side, angle, man. <laughs> okay, so it's Scarin's up here topside. He's trying to get back on the board. He knows Fake God has no flash any longer. The Eep comes down, the damage goes out, and Impact is the first one on Evil Geniuses to grab a kill. Yeah, sometimes we win, sometimes we die top lane. Uh, Wave is pushing away from him. Doesn't have flash from the level one. So we do get to see some repercussions. Uh, you yes. know, there is there is more game to play. There is aftermath after these level ones, despite, uh, you know, scrims sometimes being remade after uh, disasters <laughs> of the like. And since Impact ended up not dying in it and the flash was blown, good heads up play by Sven Scaren to go punish one of the flashes that was used in the level one. Dardock now between two evil members. Oh, man, he tries to invade, he tries to get something, but all he does is give Finn Scaring some pins to knock over with that bowling ball. Evil Geniuses ties up the game in kills in gold. They put Kane in the ground as well, and Finn Scaring is right back in it. Got to keep some good focus here. Tilt proof. Captain Flowers, oh, all yes. the ones don't mean everything. You just write down all the flash timers and you punish. Dardock here goes for the invade while his top lane arrow just got killed. This is a bad timing. This is not your timing to go for an invade. No. Impact is still topside. You do not have flash from the second kill towards uh, mid lane where he used it to be able to pick that one up. And just like that, the evil geniuses right back in this game, picking up those kills top side of the map. And here's, uh, so Dardock also, I'm just going to go ahead and start this statement off with I am not familiar with what Blue Cane currently builds because I haven't seen him in a while, but it will be a Mana Moon built here by Dardock on the Blue Cane this game. You can see already stacking up the Tier of the Goddess in the inventory, so we'll have to try to keep track of when that one is all the way charged. Dardock, still level 5, has two procs on the Dark Harvest from the couple of assists that he's already collected for himself. And now with he and Neo rotating over here into the mid lane, Jizuke just with a quick dash getting away from the CC and the damage, but the Paddle Star catches up, but not enough to grab the kill. So Jizuke doesn't have to use the cleanse or anything like that, but will have to go on back home. Well, I got your back, because uh, I, I like to play Blue Cane a little bit for fun uh, in the, you know, flex queue and stuff when you're All right, what do you got? having some fun. I don't use it a lot for ranked. The higher win rate is, uh, is of course, is is Gore Drinker. It's it's going to be the red cane build. But if you're going Blue Cane, you go for uh, Lethality, and the most used and highest win rate uh, for solo queue is either Prowler's Claw or Dustblade. Uh, it's nothing okay. fancy, not surprising there. So I am interested to see how the... Um, Man Immunia works out for Dardock. It you does bet. mean that you can constantly roam around the map. That is one thing. Sometimes spamming your extra speed from your E uh, and going for constant harassment does drain your mana uh, on Blue Cane. And and oftentimes I'll just be stealing uh, all the blue buffs later <laughs> later in the game. <laughs> so you're not because, building the Mana Moon then? Like I said, I caveat with a you know it's a bit for fun uh, type of build with me We're going full assassin, but. This does alleviate that issue. And if you're going to use blue cane in competitive, then you don't want to deny your mid laner blue buff. You want Saligo on this, uh, you know, Zoe to be able to constantly throw out bubbles and, and fish for big game changing bubble snares that are going to get you the kill. So I do like it here. Oh, Jizuke deciding that was his angle to go in for the solo kill, but with Dardock hanging around, he can't play as aggressively as he wanted to, so that means that it's just both mid laners reduced below half HP and chugging potions. Yeah, and Saligo can play it pretty safe uh, for the Zoe. This is why he, he changed his pick uh, from, from Victor to Zoe. Uh, both can play decently far back, trying to look at the minions with their long-range wave clear, but... Dardock still looking mid with red buff on and Svenskaren tanking up the Rift Herald. Uh, looks like they're going to have different ideas. Okay. Dardock, level six, but still unevolved. 
As Saligo throws out the Paddle Star, goes in, lands it onto Jizuke, nice. forces the dash over the wall. As now the Kane ulti's been used, Finscaren's in danger, going back for the smite for the heal. But Dignitas has control over the objective. Yeah. Fake God likely going to be killed here, tries to run away from the last auto attack. He is taken out by Jizuke. Afro Moose joined the fight here, throwing out the tongue, but not finding a lot as flashes come out from Dignitas over the wall, trying to get Saligo and Dardock over to safety. Saligo is out, but Dardock is still in a bit of danger. Nice sleep from Saligo, buying a little bit of extra time here for his jungler. Dardock gets away underneath the tier one turret. Evil Geniuses might just continue to go after this. But they know Dardock has no ulti. There's no ulti, and the Nar bar is up. Nope, never mind. It doesn't really matter. All right. Okay. They went for it. It didn't work out. And it's still going to be an Evil Geniuses game. Three to two with a 1,000 gold lead. Kane is one of the only, ch actually the only champion in the game that can pull off that Dota style uh, play where you run up into the trees when you're up in the top <laughs> corner. They can't follow you up in there. Uh, nobody else can actually go off the map like he can. So Dardock uh, does have his E cooldown available, uh, which is the most fun part uh, for me about playing Blue Kane. Yes, I know your your W is, is great. You know, can you know cast it, and keep on moving, but. Uh, it's all about the E speed for me when it's, he gets his transform. Regardless, even though Dig do get the Rift Herald, they chase them off temporarily, hit the eyeball, pick that one up for Dardock. With the extra kill for EG, they still hold the lead. And, uh, well, they don't hold the Scuttle Crab. Nope. Scuttle Crab goes over to the side of Dignitas. Evil Geniuses still maintaining control over the river itself, though. Unfortunately, they cannot remove that Scuttle Crab vision, but they'll sweep out the rest thanks to Ignar's Sweeper. Looking at the vision scores down there, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on here. The best vision scores in the game are just Finscaren and Neo so far, with Neo, of course, playing the role of the support down there during the laning phase. Fake got an impact in the 1v1. Fake God's taking a lot of damage, though. Nice combo coming out from Impact to take him down and get the solo kill. Thumbs down, Emo, to go with it. <laughs> That's a stone cold here from Impact. Top die, business as usual. They didn't kill me in the level one. They're never going to kill me. Uh, here's another look at the replay on the Rift Herald, though. And EG, I like how they do not get distracted by the Rift Herald. They focus on kills first. Then Aframu teleporting in on this Tom Kench once again with his, uh, you know, he's kind of cosplaying a top lane cop Tom Kench with uh, taking teleport uh, and being a, a farming Tom Kench from the bottom side, level six uh, already for himself. Uh, definitely is going to be a factor here for Dig to try and get future Whoa. saves, and he's actually getting someone to eat. Dardock trying to make the play down here in the bottom lane. Doesn't get the ult off before Ignar flashes over the wall, which means evil geniuses can use that summoner spell on their support to properly disengage this. But now it's Dignitas looking to take down the Drake here. It's Finscaren still hanging around. Oh. oh, nice escape there for Aframu and Neo, getting themselves out of danger as that Seraphine ulti flew in. But evil geniuses is not done. They're going right back to the Drake. They've got man advantage for now. Five versus three. But with the Gangplank ulti coming down, Finscaren's got to be very concerned about his overall health pool. Dardock still trying to frontline here, find a little bit of an opportunity for some damage. Sleepy Trouble Bubble marks Jizuke, but he will not be hit with a follow-up. Paddle Star Dragon is gone. The Eep takes care of it. Impact goes after Saligo, but won't find him. But that's still the objective going the way of Evil Geniuses. Just a little bit more juice on the side of Dignitas, and I think they would have actually fought that even 4v5, but Neo no mana. Dardock gets chunked out pretty early on, so they don't. They do succeed in delaying it long enough for Fake God to take two plates off of the top tower for himself, though, in addition to trying to lend his ultimate to delay it even further. So Dignitas do get some good gold out of it. It still is going to be a trailing uh, game here for them versus EG, and EG picking up the dragon on top of their gold lead uh, feels quite nice. I think that Kane should be transforming Ooh. real... Oh, he has actually... Uh, actually yeah. <laughs> what? I okay, think okay, wait, if this, hits, if this hits, it's oh, the best oh, play no ever. If this hits, it's the best. Yes! <laughs> yes! Okay, so the turret killed the first guy, and the Ezreal ulti from somewhere out in <laughs> South Carolina just killed the Zoe. Holy moly. All right, definitely. I see you. <laughs> I see you. He's got Essence Reaver completed. Cleans up that mid lane kill. 
Holy moly. Uh, that needed some cleaning up, too. Uh, I guess Illigo is now saying bot diff. Uh, what the heck is this? Honestly, there's no, if you look at the path from it, too, there were no deep wards. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of a, a, you know, a deep jungle ward or something, give you vision of the Ezreal ult that can, you can call that off. But Saligo was almost completed on his recall, probably already congratulating himself on the uh, execution that just <laughs> suffered at the hands of his tower and gets cut out real quick. That was messy, but top sides were gonna get even messier with the 2v2s. Finscaren possessed by Dardoch Salty. Dardoch trying to disengage, but must use the flash to try to complete the attempt. Finscaren goes right back in for the blooming blows and the swirl seed, but the follow-up damage isn't enough from either side, and that means everybody walks away except Saligo, who is once again in trouble of Round being go from Jusuke. Fight. He's underneath the turret once more. Saligo continues kiting out. How does it happen <laughs> twice? <laughs> No! Uh, this game is a YouTube highlight reel from start to finish, Flowers! <laughs> I'm loving it. All right, Jizuke never disappoints. As soon as yesterday, we got a segment talking about this man has turned a new leaf. He's so consistent now. Jizuke, he constantly delivers. <laughs> you know, he was just building it up. A couple of tower deaths here early on in the dig game, and he's right back to the Jizuke we all know and love. Oh my goodness, what a game is playing out in front of our eyes here today is our third matchup. 15 minutes in, eight kills, just wildness all over Summoner's Rift, man. We got the Stride Breaker now getting completed for the Gnar for more playmaking up there in the top lane. Dardoch is still... Okay, never mind, he is involved. It's, it's harder for me to tell yeah, Odyssey. Odyssey's involved on that screen. Odyssey is, is kind of hard to uh, tell, but you can tell from the icon uh, on the mini-map as well. Uh, uh, and the big wait. double-bladed side. The icon's the same! Yeah, fair that's, enough. That's base <laughs> Odyssey King! <laughs> yeah, fair enough. You can tell from the double <laughs> double scythe, though. <laughs> it's extra big now. <laughs> okay, I'll pay attention to the scythe from now on. Well, Dardock is involved. Still waiting to get that first item in there. Definitely is grabbing a kill on Neo as soon as the camera jumps down into the bottom lane. He is just gone. So the Senna is going to be shut down here for a little while and definitely sitting on two kills. Yeah, he's, he's truly fasting down here, uh, uh, Neo, and definitely has turned it on. Ezreal no longer having to scale so hard. Fake God, though. Oh, Fake God getting hit there with the wallop means he's done. Impact on a killing spree now, too. Yeah, it's definitely a top die game. Uh, this game has had so many things, you know, ups and downs, laughing, crying, uh, but one thing remains constant, Flowers, and that is impact top die here. He is just abusing Fake God. Despite uh, the extra CS picked up by the Gangplank, uh, impact is able to get the tower with a little bit of extra help, as well as multiple kills. Let's take a look at how it happened to Neo here. Big chunk. Again, we were talking about the skill shots. If you land them with the Seraphine Ezreal, it is brutal and definitely is just so accurate with these ultimates. Loving how he's always shooting them from out of vision, too. Hops into the brush here on the bottom side. Uh, last one was from base. No wards giving vision of his ultimate. And you don't give your opponents as much time to try and dodge. Well, evil geniuses will maintain the gold lead that they had earlier and even continue building it up further, man. 2,000 gold's about to become three as Shelly collides with the tier one turret in the mid lane. Was Doesn't Neo's look like Dignitas is, uh, wait, what? Was Neo's flash up from that? When we came out of the replay, his flash is up. Hmm. I do not know specifically. Suspicious. I don't want to say it if I'm not 100% oh. confident, but I'm 100% confident that Dardock is 100% dead. Now the sleep down onto Impact may just get a return kill here. Saligo will not find that one. Jazuke grabbing a little bit of damage here off the back end. Oh no, poor little Nar. He thought he got away, but he just runs out of the bush with 50 health and gets murdered as the sleep finds its way onto Seraphine. Here comes the damage oh. to follow it up. She is gone. Aphromu taking the kill credit as Dignitas pick themselves up a couple of kills off of the back end of losing their jungler. Now pressuring onto the tier one turret, trying to close that gold gap. And that's going to be two towers, Flowers, because impact going down leaves Fate God alone on the top side. He finally answers back. Top tower, top tower is dead. Mid tower also falling here. So it's a huge, huge bounty for Dignitas as they pick up two extra 
objectives for themselves. That makes up a lot of that gold difference. So even though EG retaining control over Dragons, still with a decent gold lead for themselves, Dig coming back pretty quickly. And it is the Prowler's Claw, uh, the Prowler's Claw that we are looking for from Dardock. So it's just the tier starting item. I know Freak specifically loves this starting item uh, since they added the extra, you know, on hit uh, damage for minions to it. Uh, makes a lot of sense. The burn, by the way, damage over time uh, does not wake you up. Anything coded as such. And impact burning down eventually picked up here at the hands. But really, the cool thing was the poke damage. Fall asleep and you're dead. <laughs> yeah. As we said for champ select, Neo's got plenty of range now too on the uh, Senna. See if we can get a soul check-in uh, anytime soon here on the Senna because that looked like a, a frustratingly long range auto from the Senna already only 19 minutes in. Okay, we've got a very close game on our hands. We've got Baron coming up here in about 45 seconds. Now, the Drakes completely favor Evil Geniuses at this point with a 2-0 count, and the next one's not spawning for about three minutes. So with nothing to really fight for just yet, what do you want to see from these teams, and particularly from Dignitas, since they're the team that's currently behind? Uh, we need to look for bubble positioning. Here's a fight, though. Oh, no, never mind. We got a fight instead. No time to talk about that. It's been scaring, flashing over the wall, staying alive. Gangplank ulti going to be keeping some people away as Dardock goes into the back line, goes right back out of that line. Is now a bit more damage is coming down on the Dignitas. Neo going into the stasis, keeping himself alive as Impact's about to be shut down with the damage on Jazuke, bringing another one in over to Dig. Has a double kill for Saligo. Just spells a curtain call for evil geniuses. What is that? One, two, three, four. Let the bodies hit the floor. It's definitely versus the world. And the world's got a big old anime sight. Dignitas <laughs> just take everything, and they're going right over the Baron Pit on spawn. All right, Dignitas are claiming that spot, Flowers. What a fight in the jungle. Baron will be such a big reward. They can push down bottom side, standing gold with that outer turret there still, too. They have so much they can clean up on the map. And my goodness, they are playing so well around these sleep timings. Fed Tom Kench doing work for Afro as well. Multiple saves in this fight. Neo and Afro started out on a Svenskaren, forcing out his Zonias early. And with that early use of the Seraphine ultimate, no priority targets hit. That is a main team fight tool down. So even though Impact gets a pretty good NAR ultimate here, there's no follow up from EG at this point. They've already used their major cooldowns. They've already lost two members of the team, and Dignitas are able to pounce. Holy cow, man. That Honda performance play showed off exactly how it crumbled there for Evil Geniuses. Damage in the last team fight will spell it a different way in case it didn't resonate. 3,000 damage from the Zoe, 2,000 from the Kane, 2,000 from Gangplank. Now, Ezreal did 3K over on the other side, but aside from him, it just wasn't quite at the same level, man. Dignitas feeling great after that one. And now, forget the question I asked you earlier, Kobe. It is no longer relevant. Dignitas do not have to worry <laughs> about fighting from behind us. They now command Baron 21 minutes in, and they got two minutes left to use it here. Considering they've only taken two turrets so far, that's tons of standing gold they can try to control. Zaligo's got to be careful to not get punished right here. And Drake is spawning in 45 seconds. Yeah, you know what they have to worry about? Pretty soon, it's a uh, Zoom Zoom Kane. Dardock level 12 now. He's got the Prowler's Claw. Close to, I would vote for Ghostblade. Because uh, the most frustrating thing... Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, we don't have time to talk about it, my friend. Lilia is gone. Impact trying to escape now as the Gangplank ulti comes down and separates the rest of the team from him. Narbar is just about charged. Dignitas have to respect that one, but they don't really care too much as the gobble from the Tom Kench keeps Dardock safe from any sort of follow-up counterattack. Jazuke's jumping in there, going after Saligo yet again. This whole game is a highlight reel of tragedy for Jazuke going after these kills on the enemy Zoe. It's always so close, but still so far. Five alive on Dignitas, and they're pushing down the mid lane. Definitely is the lone hope for EG right now. He's got his Conqueror stacks up. He's trying his best. Mystic shot number three lands. Pretty accurate, but Dardock's coming. Okay, Dardock and Dignitas trying to stick around long enough to make sure they get that tier two, and yes, they will. And now, hey, man, they've got a buy one, get one free deal as they can manage to get over to the Drake Pit. No opportunity for evil geniuses to contest this one with Jazuke still dead for another second or two. And that means Dignitas stopped the soul stack in the process of taking more and more gold from evil geniuses. Afro moves not done, though. We got another play breaking out here on the bottom side. 
and Dardock picks Finn Scaring up. Man, he's just free money at this point. Yeah, it feels so nice to be able to run through the enemy jungle like this on Kane at this point. Baron buff still on, so they send Saligo back to answer Impact's split push, and Dardock's still here with no mana, no life either. Oh, but he's saved, and he's healed, and he's healed again. And Dardock is still alive, running away from evil geniuses. This is one of those kinds of games for EG. So often people are just getting away with the smallest amount of health, and it's so frustrating. But for Dignitas, they are just smooth criminals on Summoner's Rift here. 12 to 8 now. I honestly love the Dignitas story, too. It's so many players that were rejected from other teams. Fake God, Saligo, getting their chances to shine here. Team fully rebuilt around Dardock. Uh, Neo, I think, you know, after the name change, coming in with a vengeance, too. And Afro Moose sticking true to raising up new AD carry after new AD carry to greatness. If they can complete this win, Moving to four and two at the top of the standings here in the LCS sets them up crazy. so nicely. It's a, it's actually crazy how how above expectations these guys have been able to perform, and it's been in an exciting manner. You can't say they're not doing it <laughs> without flair. Ten different unique champions for Dardock, going very aggressive here with the gameplay. I also just love the fact that every single time we try to talk about a subject, we've got a fight breaking out before the conversation even gets off the ground. As another kill comes through, Dignitas. At this point, man, can we just put a new alcove in the jungle for Svenskaren? Because they're farming him like one of the camps now. Just pick him up <laughs> on your Gromp and Wolves rotation. You might as well. Dignitas are owning the entirety of neutral territory on Summoner's Rift here in this game. 13 to 8, continuing to apply pressure up here in the top side. Looking towards these remaining tier two turrets. As you can see, the gold graph tell quite a story with that ocean of red there that's been happening since the 20 minute mark. Ever since Dignitas got that team fight and got that Baron. All right, and uh, Dardock did complete his Monomune, so we shall see about the transformation time for that as well. Um, cruising along pretty nicely here. I think Saligo with the Zoe, though, has been doing so much work. We've seen the difference between the Zoe's landing these critical bubbles over and over versus the ones that don't. And since Ooh. we've seen so many hits... Oh! See you later, Seraphine! The tour is canceled as now Dardock's getting right back out. The ulti buys him the escape route and the tier two turret falls down as well. Dignitas, they found themselves a kill. I don't think they're going to go for anything else, but they get out, they'll take the turret, they'll take the blue buff, they've got everything. Yeah, you thought I was being a little too brutal there with the uh, Kane kills you in your sleep when Zoe's on his team, Flowers. <laughs> That's just what happens. A sleepy trouble bubble hits, Dardock goes in, and you are toast. Such a good little uh, synergy here, and I think so much credit does go to Saligo for doing the hard work of hitting those because a Zoe missing skill shots is not a Zoe at all. No, Zoe missing skill shots is <laughs> just not much of anything at all as Dignitas is now prepared for the second Baron of the game. Still commanding a massive gold lead here. Full control over this top side of the map. You can see the wards being set up by Dignitas in the enemy jungle, making sure they're fully aware if Evil Geniuses ever decides to approach from that angle. But Evil Geniuses isn't on that angle. They're all in mid, trying to rotate over as a group. They know that nobody can be alone when Kane and Zoe are still a factor. But the fact that everybody's still stuck together and they have to move over so slowly and methodically means Dig had Pryo, Dig takes out the tier 3 turret without a fight, and Dignitas can disengage cleanly. Good. I want this game to go long, Flowers, because I want to see the <laughs> zoom zoom cane. When I, my favorite part is if blue cane gets uh, ghost played, uh, and you get to activate that while eing at them, you just constantly go in for, <laughs> oh, gonna activate Baron, even though you miss, you still hit there. Uh, slight delay on it. Um, but the ghost blade plus E is, is so frustrating for a team like EG to deal with because they don't have point and click CC to deal with. It's something that you bring up when you talk about champs like LeBlanc, uh, when they're constantly going in for these uh, poke combinations that are hard to punish without instant CC. And so it has to be really reactive stuff from EG. Uh, they've got slow moving projectiles. You know, the Encore for, uh, S uh, for Seraphine is probably the closest chance because it's, it's very difficult for Lilia or Nar to have any sort of on-demand effect there. 
Um, and he yeah. actually goes for the spell shield instead uh, for Dardoch, so that protects him even from those slight CC options. Yeah, when I think of a highly agile projectile, I do not immediately want to mention a bowling ball, but that's about all they've got to work with here, as they do <laughs> manage to poke off the Edge of Night from Dardoch. Dignitas moving forward, wanting to contest this one. Evil Geniuses, they know they've already got the two Drakes. They want to try to stick around and make it three. Dardoch's approaching from the side. Drake down to about 2,000, and it's Drake over to Dignitas, tying those up, and they disengage. Nice mobility here from Dardoch. Slips over, steals it. EG crying once again. Does oh. anyone to get tagged? Fake Guts still here on the front line. Saligo going unstoppable. Jazuke going back to the fountain. Definitely in a bad spot. Vinscaren still alive, but not for long. Stepping forward just oh. a little bit farther, trying to grab a kill. He's in the stasis, but he's gone, man. Double kill for Neo, and Dignitas gets themselves an ace for nothing. Bud Light ace for the big plays in the bottom lane. They aren't even walking towards the Baron here just yet. They're leaving Fake God to push down mid, realizing, okay, we can't just push to end right now. There's still a lot of stuff left in that enemy base. Let's just take Baron for free. They say you'll never know if you don't try, Flowers. Give me some more blue cane in competitive. Somebody tag Daniel Dracos. I know he is a cane main for a long time. <laughs> I love this stuff. We need to Where get you at, this Dracos? Mod. That was hilarious. Did you see at the beginning, Darduck goes in, just one shots without even having to use his ultimate, survives the whole fight. Oh my goodness, it's just so cool how, yes, they let Dardoch, you know, use all these unique champions, but they also have built-in synergy. Tom Kench devours, lets him get free resets. They also have Zoe Bubbles. Okay, the ultimate was used for the one shot, and then, and the second one, he just uses uh, W and Q, and then the third one heals on his E right back out onto the wall, doesn't go down. Clean ace from Dig. Nobody losing their life. Uh, and this is this is now going to be just a torrential downpour as there are exposed inhibitors, there are dead inhibitors, and Dig with a Baron buff can march straight through the bottom side. Is there? Oh, never mind. No time to ask a question. Sleep goes through. Nice shutdown onto Dardock. That's pretty big here for Evil Geniuses. That'll buy them 45 seconds if they don't have to deal with the full might of Dignitas. <laughs> Invert chiming in as well. All right, that's good. We got to get all the coaches on board. All analysts and coaches uh, need to be impressed so we get more stuff like this. Uh, love it when the unique picks actually work out, you know. It's, it's a completely different scenario. I remember always back to two years ago or three years ago when we had uh, Moon pull out the Shaco. Never mind, Fake God under attack. Might have to fight for his life. Fake God down to about a quarter HP, saved by Tom Kench. Sleep finds a target, so much damage onto the Evil Genius's lineup. Everybody's at half HP or lower. Yes, they nearly got the kill onto Fake God, but again, close doesn't get it done. It's a game of inches here today as Evil Genius has come up short time and again. Dignitas continuing the siege of the tier three turret. That one falls down, it's a nine to three turret. Cow, cow, boom! <laughs> See ya later, you poor little prehistoric Yordle. As Gangplank just marches back up to the top side, Fake God wants to turn this one into a three inhib game. Jazuke moves forward to try to stop him however he can. Svenskeren also hanging around here, but it's so much that these guys have to deal with now. Svenskeren goes forward and he's gone. Neo is unstoppable. One and eight for Svenskeren in this game. Neo continuing the chase, looking for one more auto on the death lead, but they don't even need it. Dignitas after an awesome fight 20 minutes into the game the next 12 minutes is just their highlight reel and they take down eg ah that was refreshing and look at the smiles on their faces it makes it that much it. better flowers when you can perform ultimate it. bravery on the lcs stage <laughs> 10 completed champions for dardock but my honor goes to saligo it's nothing if you don't hit those Zoe bubbles. He had the most kill participation in the team. It's so nice to be able to set up with these opportunities. And I really did like how the all the coaching staff also behind it for Dignitas. They've got Tom Kench for devouring so you can get multiple resets. They have Zoe bubbles to set it up. Uh, just just such such a fun game here. And we've got uh, another unlikely 4-2 and two team battling yeah. at the top. 
I don't think a lot of people would have predicted Dignitas to be four and two after two weeks of regular season play, but hell yeah, Dignitas, they're getting it done. And now we're going to go ahead and throw to a break here, but once we come back, we're going to hear from Saligo in the Verizon post-game interview. So don't y'all go anywhere. See you soon.